So here I have four files, PNG files, uh, and this is, mm, let's say, these are students who answered. So the Niels Bohr answered like this, Avogadro like that, etc., etc. So now we can feed this to our program. And to do so, we go to data capture and you, you need to see these processed pages here because without uh, the, the detected layout, it won't work. So go to data capture and do it automatic. So just click on the automatic button and then go to where you stored your files. So you can feed the PDF or PNG files and the best resolution should be 300 dpi. From here you should uh, choose different answer sheets because we didn't do the photocopying. So choose different answer sheets, choose your uh, scanned versions and press OK. Now. Now everything is done and from here you can zoom in the answers of your students. So this is zero uh, threshold and this is uh, the, the, the feelings of your students. If you see any red values here, it means that the program, the program was struggling to identify the answers. So you need to go through it manually if it shows that. Okay, so since we have our data captured, we can go to marking. But before that, I want to show you what to do in this preferences uh, button. So here uh, you can go through all of these settings and familiarize with them. So before that, it was written LibreOffice in the CSV data files, but I made it uh, go uh, JEDIT or GEDIT. So this is our um, default text editor. And in the case of CSV, you don't really need to see it in a table uh, layout. So then you go to documents and if you don't need any of this, just uncheck them but be sure that you send the catalog to your uh, test creator. So next in the display, I didn't change anything uh, for the scans. Uh, you can choose the DPI. So I would go for 300 and anything else stays the same for marking. Uh, the maximum marking by default is 20, so I change it to 100, so it will uh, it will uh, calculate the percentage. For the rounding type, you either go floor or ceiling, so um, or just rounding. So uh, what is ceiling and floor? So let's say you have 3.5 points for one of your students. If you go floor the program will count it as three. If you go ceiling, it will count it um, four. In here for the annotations, uh, you are using uh, your scans and they will be in PNG format or JPEG format. It doesn't really matter. So for here, you don't really need to uh, change anything and after that you have email and project so for example for your uh, email you can set up the SMTP uh, choose your user and password so the program can log into your email box and if you ask it to send the email to your students it, it can do that. So for the project, uh, this is for this particular project. So it overrides the parameters that are 
written here. If you don't want it uh, to overwrite or to change anything for this particular um, project, you just go OK. For now, I'm going to set the darkness threshold uh, to 0 0.6, let's say. So 60% of this box should be filled. So now I press OK and I go to marking. Here you can see the first button. So general rule is just go up, down, up, down, up, down, everywhere. So just press mark and it will mark your students and notify you that everything uh, went well. So after that, you have your student list section and here you choose your student list and it usually... Okay, so it's here list CSV and... So in your tests you will need to put the list in this format of CSV comma separated values into the folder and press apply. You can edit it. So as you can see, it has three columns, first name, forename and ID. And for each of your students, you have name, forename and ID. So here they uh, give you their year of birth as an ID. So if you need to change it, you can do that from here, edit list. Then you choose your primary key from this list. For us, it will be name, for example. And we don't have uh, the coded section in our tests, but we will have in uh, real life examples and I will show you in the next video. So, pre-association or none. Here you can choose uh, the association, automatic or manual. In our case, we can go manual. Oh, okay, so we didn't have name field, that's why we couldn't do that. From here, you can export it. Uh, export the results uh, using OpenOffice, which is the alternative for uh, Microsoft Office, as a PDF or comma-separated values. So this is the text file. And I would go with the OpenOffice and press export. And since it says open the file, it will automatically open the file after the, after the generation. Okay, so since we didn't have the name field in our tests, uh, we couldn't recognize them, but uh, in real life uh, example, we will have the name that comes from the person from the list, let's say Avogadro. And he will uh, have their identity on the test. So it should also be Avocadro, etc. So here you can see their um, scores. And this is in persons because we have the maximum of 100. So in this case, this these are the IDs of your questions and here you can see the uh, maximum points for each question. Here is the mean for uh, all of your students who answered uh, correctly. So for example, only one out of four answered correctly this particular question. And here are the answers of your students. So their grades are here. Okay, so you can save it as an Excel file. So you press save, uh, save as, 
and from here choose the Excel uh, Excel X extension. Also place it in the same folder as your questions and catalog so because you will be sending it to your uh, professor and name it something like mock one uh, results press save so we are done with this particular uh, file close it and then we have the annotation section so it's here and we can choose uh, what to annotate so it it might be a single file for all students but it's more convenient to have one file per student and you either choose uh, the pages with answers the pages uh, uh, from the correct version or the corrected version so i usually go with uh, last option here so question pages from corrections and I, I, I leave these all students. I don't need the selected ones, all students. And then press annotate papers. After you pressed it, it will create the PDF files for each of your students. And you can see them here when you press on the look button. And uh, in, in, in real life, you will have uh, the names like this. So the name consists of the number of variant then the name of your student that comes from the csv file the list file and the extension pdf for example uh, you open this file and here is the annotated version of your uh, neil bohr's test so as you can see the right answers they are shown as um, blue cross uh, the white circle shows the answer the, the wrong answer of your student the red cross shows uh, the intended answer the uh, the correct answer and again so for example for for this particular question which was multiple correct choice uh, Niel, uh, Niels answered only one uh, choice correctly and it is shown like this one should have been answered but I think Jon he didn't know that and the incorrect one is this one okay so you close this file you select all of them then you compress it to a zip file so let's say mock one annotated you create this uh, archive and then uh, cut it and put in the same folder as other files okay so now the work is done with this particular program and oh okay so uh, here is the send button so if you had entered your email uh, settings here and you have uh, the, the emails of your students you can directly send them from here but don't do that because usually professors ask uh, to to keep the tests unspoiled so but just for your information you can do it from here Okay, so what you should send, so that's one, is an annotated version, then the results of the questions themselves, and uh, okay, so where is my catalog here? So these four files should be sent to your professor. Okay, it's all done, and next I will show you how to process your own real-life tests with my Python script.